In Colossians chapter four, verse two, it says to continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. Now that word continue is an emphasis that you're supposed to keep this weapon in operation daily. You can't take breaks because once you break it, it's like a muscle. You become weak again. You can't break it. You have to continue in prayer. If you don't continue, you get interrupted and you break that flow of the anointing of prayer. Praying and sowing must be combined. Remember when you're sowing, you're helping your man of God, you're pushing the gospel, you're pushing the ministry of God. And so Satan knows that you are strong in honor. So Satan has to find room for where you're lacking, where you're not active in spiritual weapons. There are some people that sow. There are some people that pray and don't sow. And then there's people that sow and don't pray. If you're taking notes, write that down. That's a wisdom door. There's some people that pray, but don't sow. And then there's people that sow, but don't pray. And even if you're sowing, if you're not praying, Satan gonna get the upper hand on you somehow. I, I want you to catch this, because if, if you don't have the combination correct, you're going to make God out to be a liar and God not a liar. It's just you not following the fullness of righteousness. Remember, and, and I want you to write this down. It's so simple. But if you're taking notes, write this down. Talk to God. It's a wisdom door. It's so simple. But it's so powerful and potent. Talk to God. You talk to God because this is a part of your ministry. This is your functionality. And when you talk with the Lord, you also receive a grace to step into declaration and decreeing and operate as a commander. A commander Many don't get to the commanding stage because they are weak in prayer. They don't get to the binding and loosening stage because they're weak in prayer. There's a buildup of momentum in the spirit that happens to you when you're in prayer that you could call those things that be not as though they were and it happens as is. I do it all the time. That's why I'm able to speak to weather conditions. I'm able to speak to body conditions and it obeys me. And I refuse to be dishonored by my decree. But I'm also investing enough time in the prayer language for me to have full God faith in my words. If you don't spend moments like saints, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what believers do. Let me, let me talk to you about believers. Believers won't stay there behind at home and pray. They always got to be doing something. They always got to be doing something. Like, you know how today is Saturday? Like there's so many people out and about today instead of just being home and praying. They're not going to be home and pray. They take their free time and they always got to engage and say, oh, I'm going to the movies. Oh, I'm going here. I'm going here. I'm going here. Instead of sitting there behind home and pray. And then them be the same people that always asking for prayer and talk about I'm struggling with this. I'm doing with this. But they won't invest moments in the Lord. If God is not interesting to you, if King Jesus is not interesting to you, it is 100% of the time that you are not in prayer. 
Because in prayer, the Lord becomes fascinating. Miracles start happening, signs and wonders start happening, and things start occurring that are beyond natural laws. I've been driving before and um, a flood of rain happens. I remember I was in a flooded out place one time and the rain was just coming down. I'm driving, I'm on the highway and the flooded out rain, but I'm already in prayer. So when the flooded out rain came through, and it, the, the rain pouring from the heavens, pouring from the heavens. And I said, hey, stop. I command your rain to stop. I don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> this starting to look dangerous. Stop. And the rain stopped. This stopped for five minutes, 10 minutes. It stopped for the duration of time that I was driving on that and guess what? The sun started shining. And that rain obeyed me because I am a commander of weather. I am not trying to be, not hoping to be, but I invest moments in that prayer exercise for now, even my confidence, my faith and my words to bear effectiveness not only in the spirit realm, but in the physical world. I remember being inside of uh, Los Angeles. I was in Carson, California. And uh, I remember seeing uh, a white family on the front row, a black family. And... I prayed for a black lady. She couldn't stand up correctly. I prayed for her and I was telling her to look at me in the eyes and say she was, this is what the lady was doing to me. As I stared at her, she was like, no, I can't walk. I can't walk. No, no, I can't walk. She was whispering to me, trying to tell me like, don't embarrass me. I can't walk. And I held her hand for a time, and I was telling her, I was, I, I wanted to tell the spirit, shut up! I think I did tell her to shut up. <laughs> she was an older lady. <laughs> I know she probably was like, oh, this boy is aggressive. Because spirits like to keep people stuck in their world of infirmity. I told the lady. And I kept telling her, stare at me, look at me in my eyes. And as she was looking at me in my eyes, then I let her hands go. And she recognized that she walking. And then saints, what was wild was there was a white couple, uh, well, there was a white family next to them. And I know why God did that. He wanted to show that he not into this race stuff. You know, all this stuff. That's just Satan's way to create hatred, strife, jealousy, division, and carnality out of people, the works of the flesh, to get them into a race conversation, a ethnic conversation, a, you know, all that stuff, cultural conversation, all that stuff. You can't win because it's satanically influenced. If you ever go talk to somebody about race and race this, race this, you can't win in a conversation like that. You have to step into hatred because God does not govern that. You know, it, it's not going to bring no profit to nothing. It's foolish. So, then I took the white lady. The white lady was an older lady. The white lady was also trying to caution me. No, 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 I can't. No, 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 I need to sit down. <laughs> and I had to tell both of them to shut up. And since I had the white lady stare at me as I supported her until she recognized that the power of God had strengthened her legs. The power of God had strengthened her body. And saints, what I'm doing is bringing the person into the spirit world that I'm in. In their world is fear, infirmity, disease, defeat, satanic power, loss of dignity and dominion. But in my world, there's healing, strength, recovery, supernatural, miracles, 
happenings of God that the natural laws cannot restrict or evict. You have to be in a prayer session with God every day. I'm not talking about you doing prayer without any excitement, any enjoyment, any expectation. I'm talking about you doing prayer, recognizing that you're sowing into the presence of God. And as a result, his presence has a harvest every time. Now, the, the reason why you got to mix prayer in your sowing, because when you sow into your man of God, you become a target. Number one, Satan wants to affect you and take you out so that you don't sow into your man of God. When you don't pray while you're sowing, your sowing cannot last forever because Satan is going to find a way to capitalize on that prayerlessness to bring you into the demonic in your mind. If you don't have that prayer element strong, your mind will not endure as a sower. I know many people that start off sowing and couldn't complete sowing because they didn't pray. That praying aspect is how you protect what God is teaching you. That praying aspect is how you guard the revelation, the understanding. Now, I also want to say this to you, that when you spend time in prayer, you'll actually be able to have an open eye to see who your man of God is that you're sowing into. If you don't go into prayer, you will not see him properly. If you remember in the book of Acts, when Saul was praying in that house, it was in that moment of prayer that God could send Ananias to remove the scales from the eyes. Now, if he's not in prayer, the removing of the scales can't happen. And so it is the prayer that permits for that scale, those scales. Now, what is the mystery of scales? Now, since we know that scales is like some type of flaky substance that fell off the eyes of Saul. But if we think about the scale, we understand a weight scale as well. There are scales that people use to weigh fruits. There are scales that people use to weigh their body. When they say that the scales fell off of the eyes, understand that your eyes, it weighs out things. It has perspectives, observations, and opinions. So if you saw how it happened with Moses' day when he tried to bring peace between those two brethren, they said to him, we saw you kill that man the other day. So who are you to try to judge us? And so this, their eyes scaled Moses as a murderer. And then when his eyes saw what they said, he scaled his life in danger. So he ran and hid. But these are all the scales of the eye. When the woman was caught in the act of adultery, their eyes saw adultery. They scaled out the man that she was with. But when Jesus said, he that hath no sin cast the first stone, now he's giving them a scale from his observation. And the scale that they had of their observation is now debunked. 
is rejected, it is no longer their persuasion because they recognize the scale from Jesus's eye and what he weighed out. So if we look at all of the different scaling that the eye could have. In the book of Psalms, David said that the fool says that there is no God. So the fool have scaled with their eyes, even though I see trees, even though I see animals, even though I see people moving in the earth, even though I have oxygen, I'm breathing in. I'm still scaling that there is no existence of a person that is supplying these things from the heavens. So when the word of God said that Saul's scales was moved from his eyes. Before I complete this, I want to just say this to you. The reason why I'm able to teach you like this, I'm operating in the scales of my eyes. I have many scales. That's why if you listen to me and you just leave the spirit of stupid, you will understand that God is talking as me, not from me, not with me, as me. Every time I get on here, it is the father conversing with you. That's why if you listen to me with the right heart, you will have strength and energy. You'll have divine energy, divine momentum, divine vitality. Because the scales of my eyes can weigh things out from another world, beyond this world. So it's through prayer, Saul is praying, which turned, which is actually converted to Apostle Paul. And the scales is removed. God says Ananias, the disciple, the apostle, prays for him. Scales are removed. And now he could see. Now, what is Saul, which turns into Apostle Paul, really seeing now? The first thing he sees is an apostle of God, a man of God, his man of God. Because when that apostle laid his hands on a, a, a Saul, which turned into Apostle Paul, the first thing that he views when he see a lot of people never thought about this. But the first thing that Saul sees is his man of God. He didn't see trees. He didn't see birds. He didn't see houses, villages, neighborhoods. The first thing he gets prayed for, and when the scales fell off, the first thing that he looks at in the physical world is the man of God that has the power to open up his eyes, which is very significant. The first thing that God wants to open up your eyes to in this life is the man of God that has been sent to you. Not the man of God that you watch on YouTube. Not the man of God that you grew up hearing about. Not the man of God that you're interested in their gifting. But the man of God that has been given authorization and power to impart to you. To open you up. To take away your virginity towards the divinity, which means that even though you have experienced forms of godliness, you have not experienced God. Because God has hidden himself in your man of God. So you become a spectator until your man of God actually comes. Because Ananias, that, that disciple, is wearing the grace to now bring forth Apostle Paul from the place of Saul. Now, if this disciple does not come, Saul remains blind, 
Saul remains hungry because he cannot eat a drink. All right. And so what that happens in that aspect where he couldn't eat a drink, it represents spiritual and mental dehydration and starvation. Now, this is what goes on to make people spiritual holes. This is why people go to every man of God and be like, prophesy to me. I need a word from God. Please pray for me. That, that's what goes on when people, now you understand what's going on. People are spiritually dehydrated. They're mentally dehydrated because the supply system does not come just because you're in the presence of God activity. It comes when you're in the presence of where God has chosen to manifest himself to you. So you could be in the presence of a man that actually has a true anointing and you still be spiritually starved, still be mentally dehydrated because that's not the faucet in which God is turning on to supply water. Saul praying in that house brought his man of God to him. And Saul praying in that house brought the opening of his eyes to who his man of God was. You have to be in prayer so that you do not become evil when your man of God manifests. You have to be in prayer so that you could stay in flow with your part and the divine office you carry towards your man of God to assist him and help him and obey him and follow him and please him and serve him and stay in connection with his flow, his river, his anointing, his kingdom. Because your man of God is a king. They possess their own kingdom and their kingdom is governed by the kingdom of God. But God has entrusted them with their own kingdom because they have a level of specified wisdom and specified knowledge that they could impart from their kingdom and they could make you into an individual that you never knew you could be. So Colossians 4.2 says, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. If you don't continue, you open up a door, a portal within your soulish man, your mind for the Luciferian realm. And the Luciferian realm is where Satan could switch the operation you originally had towards your man of God. Remember, the Luciferian realm is to fight back at the person of God. Because if you think about it, Lucifer wanted to challenge God. The Luciferian realm is opened up in someone's soul to operate when they're not in prayer because you, you're not in the spirit. So while you're in the flesh, there's no telling what's going to come to you while you're in the flesh. There's different things that come to people while they're in the flesh. Um, combativeness can come to you while you're in the flesh. That means you want to combat. That means in, in combat and in combativeness, you disagree, you find another truth, you find another uh, opinion, you find another verdict. In combativeness, that means that there's, there's a, there is an enjoyment to resist or there's an enjoyment to contradict. Also, um, in the flesh that something can come to you is comparison. You can say, well, he does that, so I could do that. He says that, but I, but I, I could say that. But 
what you got to also weigh out, why is there such uh, authority there? Am I really producing, am I producing the same fruit that he produces towards the father's presence? And if not, could I be overstepping? And yes, I am. Because I'm a person that wants to steal the privilege, but not steal the sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And, and, and if I want to steal the privilege, but I don't want to steal the sacrifice, I'm a deceiver. I'm deceitful because now the very thing that qualified this to be yielded out of the person or produced out of the person is the very thing that I want to bypass and then still go to that. So in the flesh, combativeness comes to you according to your relationship with your man of God and also comparison. You'll compare yourself. And in comparison, no good thing lies because now you want to exalt yourself as if the man of God is learning from you. The man of God is emulating you. Uh, one time there was a young man that I, I was, I was basically like taking care of him in a sense. I was helping him out. I was assisting him. And um, I was doing a conference uh, in New York and he couldn't get to the conference. I paid for his flight, paid for his hotel room. And when he got to New York, he was hungry. I fed him. And while I'm preparing for my conference that same night, I spoke to my team right there and I said, the spirit of the Lord just told me to get your hair cut. So we're going to get your hair cut. His hair was a mess. Now, mind you, this is my conference, right? I'm going to go minister. I stopped the conference and I told everybody, I said, and I told my other sons, I said, find a haircut place for him. And one of my sons came up and said, prophet, why are you doing this? Like, you you got to do your conference tonight. You need to focus. Like, he, he, he not really, you know, we could do that after. I said, you hear what I said? The spirit of God said to get him a haircut. So even though we got to prepare, let's do that. And since we was in New York, now New York has the worst traffic in history. I've never gone to a place ever that had the worst traffic like this. I mean, it's awful. Like even if the uh, 911 is in the, the lanes, they'll block up the lanes. They won't move. It's just awful. I, I, I wouldn't live in New York. I wouldn't live in New York. <laughs> I don't like that place at all. I actually found out they was lying. Like they make it seem like it's so fly. It's not. Worst place I ever been to probably. Worst. Even I went to New York like on leisure time to try to like relax and chill. And it, it wasn't it. For us to get to one place, it probably was like three hours because of traffic. Oh, it's just off. I went. But saints, that's what that's how I was rocking. So I, I took care of the young man, cut his hair, had him looking nice, dot dot dot. Do you know that that same young man began to say that I was trying to be like him? I was fighting him. Now, meanwhile. This was something that was so devastating to me. Very devastating to me. Very, very devastating to my heart. I was wounded, but I healed quickly because I already know how to heal myself. But it was so shocking to me that people could have evil hearts when you show them love, while you show them care that they have never experienced from anyone. And so I'm telling you this for, there's a cause for why I'm telling you this, because 
When you're not in prayer, you, you have witchcraft spirits talking to you about your man of God. Like saints, do you know, even though you may not see them, there's people that will watch and be like, you know, every time he comes on, he just wants some money. He just wants somebody to. But then there's people that recognize how come prophet is not asking for a seed? How come he don't do like the other Facebook people and the other people are like, and they just throw down your throat, you know, sowing to me, 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 so come on, come on, right here, right here, right here, right here. The Lord told me there's five of you that are about to pick this up it, 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 right now, right now. And that's what they do all the time. And since somebody will look from a different scale. Meanwhile, there's people that are in prayer and they recognize this is God talking to me on the earth. And here's my chance for me to take care of God. Bless God. This is a chance for me to, to lavish my love on God. And that's, that was one of the major life-changing points that happened to Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene recognized that God was right there. And this is my chance to minister to God. This is my chance to please God. And it, it, there's no law when I'm in God's presence. I can love him however I want to love him. That, that See, that's what a lot of people miss. Um, and, and let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Let me just show you something. Let me show you something in the word of God. See, when you're in the spirit... In the presence of God, there's no laws. So there's no thou shall not. This is just my chance to be a pleasurable experience to God. Let me show you something. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. All right. Okay, let's go to verse 22, right? It said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Did you just catch that? Did you just catch that? Against such, there is no law. So when you operate in love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, it takes you out of thou shall not. Because now the spirit is able to have you do things, have you say things, have you become things that's against what the flesh has been imprisoning you, imprisoning you to not become, to not do, to not say, to not be. Mary Magdalene had this happen. She was possessed by prayer. She was possessed by sowing. And in that moment, Jesus became her lover. Mary Magdalene operated as Jesus's wife. Not his daughter. She was at the tomb looking for her husband. Her husband told her, I'm going to be back, baby, in three days. And she's at the tomb saying, my man going to come. I, I know it. I believe him. Meanwhile, the disciples that were not in prayer are afraid of the Roman government that they're going to arrest them and crucify them for their association with Jesus. I'm showing you what happens when you're not in prayer. You don't even have faith in your prophet. You don't even have faith in their words. You don't even have faith in their teachings. But here's Mary Magdalene, a woman prayed up, sold up. She sold upwards. She prayed upwards. She served upwards. She focused upwards. She meditated upwards. And this woman, she has nothing holding back. She's not holding back anything. If you look at even her approach to Jesus, she went go touch Jesus. She didn't say, Jesus, can I touch you? She went to touch Jesus because she got a realm of ownership in her mind. She's like, this 
is mine. She, you ever thought about that? She ain't gonna touch him. Now watch this here. The woman with the issue of blood had that same mentality that she stepped into in one moment because she allowed love, joy, peace, gentleness, temperance. She let all of those things, long suffering, she let it take her over. And against that, there was no law. And so even though it was unlawful for a woman that had that issue of blood to be roaming the streets, they was considered unclean. It was against the, the law for her to be out and about like that. But she touched Jesus, his clothing, and she touched him. That was a form of ownership. I want to say something deep on here. Until you own Jesus in your mind, you will not live a life of miracles. You got to learn to own him. Zele kovale krovanze. Ane kulaga ganzo. Ananon zeliva kravrazilies. You got to learn to own him in the mind. Your mind is where everything happens. And that woman, even though she was not at the teachings in the Beatitude, she was not at the wedding uh, where Jesus turned the water into wine. She was not at these pivotal moments of Jesus' life. In that one moment, mentally, she meditated on him, thought about him, made him her God, made him her husband, made him her, her lover, made him her king in that one moment. And that one moment when she got to that area where he was walking, she snatched that garment. She snatched the mantle. All through mind. Your mind moves the body. Your mind moves the body. If you're taking notes, write that down. Your mind moves the body. Your mind moves the body. Your body is moving in the direction of your mentality. Your mentality is the master and your decisions is the servant. Your mentality is the master. Your decisions is the servant. Your mind is the husband. Your decisions is the wife. If you take a note, write that down. Her mind moved her body. Her mind moved the body. She snatched the mantle of the Holy Ghost. You, but see, when she said, if I just touched the hem of his garment, she was in prayer. She was in prayer and meditation. You have to walk in prayer very strongly. In Romans chapter eight, verse 26, it says, likewise, the spirit helpeth thy infirmities. Romans eight twenty six. likewise, the spirit helpeth thy infirmities. For we know not what we ought to pray, but the spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. I mean, Romans chapter eight, verse 26. Ha! Huh? And Romans eight twenty six says that you don't know what to pray, but the spirit helpeth our infirmities. It maketh intercession for us. He, he maketh intercession for us. He maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So the Holy Ghost, when you're in prayer, when you even pray in tongues, while you're in prayer, you just pray the perfect prayer. So you don't ever have to repent for what you just said in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you pray perfectly. You never have to apologize. You never have to say, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Tongues is perfect prayer. If you take a note, write that down. And when you pray in tongues, there's a schedule that you just release with your mouth. That's why when you pray in tongues, you'll remember a bill, your phone bill. I got to pay this phone bill. Oh, I forgot to pay my phone bill. When you pray in tongues, you'll remember, I need to take that clothes off the floor and put it in the basket. When you pray in tongues, you'll remember, oh, I didn't drink much water today. I need some water. I need some water today. 
Mele Krovija na Kramazia. I need to forgive that person. I'm holding on. I'm a little mad at them still, but I need to forgive them. Lord, I forgive so and so for what they did to me, and I hand them over to you. Shele Krazian Kananzo Lokovian. Kurizia Klazali Okovolian. Don't go with her today. Don't go with him today. And you'll hear God telling you not to go to that meeting, not to go hang out with that person. And you know how much people evade shootings, death. They, they evade rapes because they prayed in tongues. The Holy Ghost will make intercession for you. The Holy Ghost will talk to you. I need to sow a seed. Kele jale zono clavazia. The seed is $800. Glemans doloma cavalanzio. There's $250 that I'm supposed to sow. I'm supposed to name this seed that I will return back to Eden to live in the blessing. I'm showing you how the spirit works. He shows you what weapon needs to work. It needs to be exercised. Kelanzo lo kovaliana. Galanun ze li kalais. Kananon ze lukani kalevien. And while you pray in tongues, I need to teach my son to do this. I need to teach my daughter about this. There's a teacher's anointing that parents receive when they pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you receive a teacher's anointing. Karazala govian zolokemien. There's words that God fill up your mind with to speak to your children. When you are a child and you pray in tongues, there are words and reactions that God give you for your parents. You'll become a genius in how to correspond with their authority and how to obey their laws. I was reading out to Zendaya Ephesians chapter six while we was having Bible study and I was showing her where the word of God said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And I asked her, I said, Zendaya, what did it say? Who are the children supposed to obey? She said, her par their parents in the Lord, their parents in the Lord. And then I told her, look what it says, for this is right. So every time you obey your parents in the Lord, this is is right. I told him it being right means that it is something that God enjoys watching. It being right means that this is something that brings a smile to God's heart. So if you want to make God smile, obey your parents in the Lord. I teach Zendaya. When Zendaya gets to a certain age, which will be 20, one, 21 will be a judgment age for our life. And so, it'll be a judgment age for our life. So I, I won't be emphasizing things as strong. If you parent correctly, you won't have to parent twice. If you take a note, write that down. If you parent correctly, you won't have to parent twice. If you parent twice, that means that you parented incorrectly. You don't teach an adult how to be an adult. You teach a child how to be an adult. So that when they become an adult, you won't be dealing with a child. But you'll be dealing with an adult that's bearing the fruits of a divine adult. Prayer is so important. The spirit of God wanted me to emphasize this, to mix prayer with sowing. Don't just sow. You need to pray. There are things that your man of God may need from you, but he may not have permission to utter it verbally. But if you're in prayer, you could hear his heart. The powerful thing about prayer 
is that when you pray, there's ideas that will come inside of you that bring pleasure to your man of God. One of my daughters bought me this jacket and she haven't even been in my ministry for long. But this can only be given through prayer. You understand? While her soul is in meditation, she says, Prophet would like a jacket like this. So she buys him a jacket. By the way, I do this also with Dr. Mike Murdoch. Dr. Mike Murdoch said that I, I have bought his whole closet. His whole closet is me. That's what he told me. But see, I'm able to do that because my soul is meditating on how to love him, how to heal him, how to be uh, pleasurable, gentle, honorable, faithful experience for his life. I'm never rude to him. If he asks me something or he says something to me, I'm never rude. I'm never evil. Nor do I inject my knowledge. I only inject my knowledge as if he asks me. I don't inject my knowledge. I don't try to impress him. I don't say, well, Dr. Merrill, look, I have taught this. Look how deep I am, Dr. Merrill. I don't do that. I don't send him none of my bills. I don't send him any of my things. I don't. I don't. Soulishly, when you love someone, you think about how you could please them soulishly. Your soul enters into the presence of God and you look for ways to make them impress by your life. Saints, you never tell a rich man you have everything, so I don't know what to get you. You never do that. Dr. Mike Murdoch is a wealthy man. Very wealthy. He is very wise and very prosperous. And money is, 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 is not even ever going to be a problem for him. Not even 1%. But my gifts to him affect him. <sighs> you know why? Because I'm in the soulish realm of the Holy Ghost. Not one time have I ever told Dr. Murdoch, you have everything, so I don't know what to get you. No, I know what to get you. Because even rich people love simplicity. There's people that buy me watches, or not, well, watches, buy me shoes. Somebody just bought me. I have a daughter that buy me Jordans all the time. What you think gonna happen to her child now I want you to catch this when you're in the soulless realm God gives you a special honor mantle of meditation remember what Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 he said you purpose in your heart to give so, so it's in the heart realm that the Holy Spirit wants to take over and take it out of deceitfully wicked and bring it into dedicated and wise, delivered and worshiping. Bring the heart out of deceitfully wicked. And saints, when your heart get out of deceitfully wicked and the Holy Spirit takes it over, you start having an accumulation of love thoughts hit you like a bomb. Saints, you're going to have to learn this. You're going to have to learn this. And um, I have taught you this even with your workplace. Uh, sometimes people don't have jobs because they really don't like nobody telling them what to do. That's why they don't have a job. They're lazy. Lazy people don't like to be told what to do. Lazy people don't like to be told what to do. Lazy people don't like working because they don't want no structure. They don't want nobody telling them how 
They should be in work at a certain time. They don't like accountability. People that don't work don't like accountability. Because when that person goes into a job, the person going here, you, you're supposed to come into lunch at this certain time. Accountability is so important. It, it delivers you from being sneaky. Accountability, um, it, it confronts your deceitful heart. And the deliverance that authority brings is now you have a platform to exercise self-denial. You have a platform to show your wisdom. Saints, enter into prayer very strongly. Do it very strongly. Step into tongues. And saints, be, be, be at peace. In your prayer language, be at peace. I want you to also have faith and recognize that every time I pray in tongues, Salakun bien, Venen Zolova Clanzio, Leni Garanzeli Cavaliers, Salag Reza de Covalienzo. As soon as I step into tongues, there was just a library of scrolls given to me by the angelic. There is a communication between me and the Father that just happened. That God has a whole list of things that my soul has been made opened up to according to the spirit world of God. The tongues of angels is a realm of tongues that you enter into when you're flowing in tongues often. Because angels come alongside of you and start influencing your tongues and start coming into sync with you and then to pray in the same tongues together. And the tongues of angels also activate the ministry of angels because you're conversing with them and no demon spirit could hear what you're saying to that angel. No demon spirit could hear the commands. No demon spirit could hear what you are releasing that angel to do. If I pray Klazala Gozila Kanasilivian, Sonala Aliliana, La Lavazo Volekroviana, Evelija Razian. If I stay in tongues, I now engage angelic tongues. Angelic tongues is adept. And when I keep on doing something, it's like if you're doing 20 sit ups and you start doing 50. If I stay in tongues, I start engaging the angelic and the angelic starts speaking things to me. I start speaking things to the angelic and I become genius in my mind. I become wise. I become smart. I, I move in discretion. I start moving in grace. I start moving in glory. And I start having decrees on my tongue. When you pray in tongues, your tongue, this tongue is receiving a mantle. It's called tongues because your physical tongue actually becomes anointed. Your physical tongue receives a mantle and even words that come out of you will become guided by the Holy Ghost. You'll no longer argue with authority. You'll no longer speak words that create wars, but you'll speak words that create wealth. It creates worship and it creates wisdom in your actions. Your tongue will guide you into righteousness. Your tongue will guide you into money cometh. Your tongue will guide you into favor. Your tongue will guide you into things that bring you profit and increase. Your tongue. Your tongue. Your tongue. Saints, did you know that when I did the 10 hour broadcast um, and I, I spoke from my tongue all that time, did you know that I lost six pounds while I was talking? When we did those 11 hour broadcasts, lost six pounds. I want you to catch this. Why am I telling you this? Your tongue affects your whole body. 
Your tongue affects your whole body. How much more if you speak health? You could reverse verdicts in your body. How much more? If you talk correct, you could unleash the health of God in your body. How much more? How much more? That if your tongue is anointed through prayer, that you'll speak things that bring even physical miracles to your body. Your tongue brings physical miracles to your mind. Your tongue brings you into money cometh. That's why we speak money cometh with the tongue. That's why Apostle Lero Thompson got money coming. Apostle Lero Thompson would pray in tongues. And God gave him that term money coming for years, decades ago. Proverbs 10, 20. The tongue of the just is as a choice silver. I'm having the privilege. I had the privilege of praying with Dr. Mike Murdoch, even when he was going through his crisis. Since one of the most powerful moments that I experienced was while he was on his, it was like he was on the brink of death. I remember telling Dr. Murdoch, I, I, I could come there. I'm not going to pray for you or nothing like that. I'm not going to uh, put no, nothing on you or nothing like that. Uh, do no type of prayer ritual. I'm just, we just going to receive this healing through present. That's what I told him. I said, we're going to do this through the law of presence. I said, I'm just going to be chilled. We're just going to be... Uh, and when I got there, I didn't, I didn't shout, ah, hallelujah. And I sat with Dr. Mike Murdoch. Now, meanwhile, Dr. Murdoch wasn't getting much sleep and all these different type of things. We're going through a very tough time. And when, uh, when I got there, I started talking to him about praise and getting into the courts of heaven to win verdicts through, through praise, through praising God. And just staying in praise until the court case is won. And since Dr. Mike Murdoch started praising God, we was in his big old mansion and he started praising God. And I let him praise God. I didn't over loud him or nothing like that, but I just was there to be a support system to him. And I saw his whole mentality switch. He started praising God. And then we held hands and prayed. And he told me, I haven't prayed this long. In a while. And saints, what was one of my most glorious moments on earth was seeing. This is probably one of the most beautiful moments I've ever had in my life. Was Dr. Mike Murdoch. After some time. Fell asleep. Saints, let me shock you. That was one of the most powerful moments of my ministry. If not, when he fell asleep and he slept, that was one of the most powerful moments of my ministry. Since he slept for a long time like a baby, was one of the most powerful moments of my ministry. Presence. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence makes me whole, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence makes me whole, your presence makes me whole, your presence, your presence. Your presence, your presence makes me whole.